I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming and today we've got our grubby little hands on a Creative Labs Sound Blaster Katana V2. Let's do this. The inherent issue with reviewing a sound device is the best way you can use to determine the quality is to listen to it. Now I could of course just play the soundbar and you could in turn hear that through the magic of the YouTubes playing on what would probably be a lesser quality speaker or headphones and well you can see the dilemma. Of course option number two is to list off all the impedance and tech specs and drown you in numbers but I'm not a big fan of that either as you can just read those technical specifications yourself online. I am going with option number three, my impressions of this soundbar. Now, the Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2 gaming soundbar is a soundbar that can take a variety of inputs, including USB, optical, Bluetooth, and HDMI arc. Using unique speaker placement, it is designed to deliver good virtual surround without requiring additional rear speakers. It also has a relatively high power rating for such a small soundbar and a good subwoofer for thumping bass and game movie explosions. It also has some RGB gamer lighting in the form of a light bar underneath the front. The Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2 gaming soundbar is a solid black affair with buttons on the top, an LCD screen on the front, and metal grills covering the various mid-range and tweeter speakers. The subwoofer has a single permanent cable to connect to the soundbar, and because low range bass sounds the same to our ears regardless of the direction, this can be placed behind or to the side of the desk or TV stand or even hidden entirely. There are a few buttons on the top of the unit, including power, Bluetooth, volume, up, down, source selection, equalizer mode, and SXFI toggle. I'd also like to note that it sits at a bit of an angle on my desk by default. So the speakers point more towards my face than towards my keyboard, if that makes sense. It also comes with a remote, which lets you adjust all your various settings. But if you really want to get down into the meat and potatoes of these speaker settings, which I'm not gonna lie, meat and potatoes should be a term used for speakers more often, you will want to install the app. Lighting can be controlled to both static or preset animated lighting with customizable color speeds and music reactive settings. There are a few equalizer modes built in like, like music, movies, and gaming. I preferred the flat, no effects version. I appreciate rich sound. If I'm listening to music, I wanna feel the warm tones, the dynamic range, all of that. I wanna hear it throughout. Volume is also important, of course, and I wanna be able to play it loudly and not distort upon doing so. But above all, the sound must stay rich. The Katana V2 was tested against some Edifer R1280T bookshelf speakers as well as a few Logitech 2.1 setups and the sound was dot 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 well, it was amazing I'm sold not only does this solve my speaker placement issue with multiple monitors as sound quality is obviously out of the window when you're playing them behind a monitor or if they're directed the wrong way is this the end-all speaker system and will you see me replacing my paradigm speakers with this what is actually a fairly small soundbar not a chance. However, this is now my go-to computer speaker. I happen to like the sound reactive lights on the bottom. I have changed them to a bit of a red hue and the soundbar slash sub setup has impressed me significantly. I fondly remember building computers with Sound Blaster branded sound cards and I am glad to say I have found a place for Sound Blaster with my computer system once again. The Katana V2 is a welcome addition to my gaming setup and that well, that's another Barefoot Gaming review. Don't forget to like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you again really, really soon. See ya.